Closer than our Ooh, what is going on, folks? Episode 32 in the building. Uh, get a few things scurried out just right now. I'm trying to get this audio thing working. Um, but I, I think we should be fine. Uh, you can always send the uh, request for me, Joey. One second. All right. Whew. Kelly, you don't want pack on here. That that's the last thing you want to do. The road. <laughs> the road. <laughs> Absolutely. Hit it. All right, folks, welcome to another episode of Inside the Rapper Studio. I am your host, Score F. Swayze, and today we have a very special guest in the building. Uh, one of the young premier artists within this city, within the scene, doing really hard work, doing really good with uh, shows, booking shows, and also with projects such as Thoughtful Was Here, Here Goes Nothing, and also coming up really soon, Mr. Bricks. Everybody, please welcome the one. The only Joey Bricks. Oh, thanks for having me, bro. Like, I always tune into your shit because your your joints be like mad informational. Like, I really I, that. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, how's it going today, man? Hey, man, I'm chilling, man. Another day, another fast. You know how it is. So, um, nah, today's cool. It's a little cold, so I didn't go outside and hoop like I usually do. But mm, straight. Be in here. That's what's up. So. With every episode, which I'm pretty sure you're aware of, have a origin story of how everything starts with the guest artist. So right. could you how everything started with the artist known as Joey Bricks? How much time do you have, bro? Like <laughs> on you. <laughs> oh shit. All right. So I started off with this music. Like I went to Morgan State and like I wasn't even supposed to rap, bro. Like, so my man's Android 23. I don't know if you know him. He's an artist and also an audio engineer. He does most of my stuff. Um, he uh, asked me to be part of this group called Miles Sobriety back in like 2012. And at that point, I was just making clothes. Like, I came in the scene for clothes. Like, like most people, if you, like 2015, 2016, I had a brand called Melted Butter that was that was flooding the streets and then like school just got too much and I couldn't do it no more. So um, I was making the merch for Miles Sobriety. And then after like a couple of like studio sessions, I was like, man, I could rap. Like, the fuck? like he was like, I could rap. So I just started rapping to myself a little bit. Then I asked Android like, yo, I think I could do a mixtape. So we ended up doing a mixtape. Fast forward, uh, Miles Sobriety kind of like fell out for me. Um, and then I met this dude named Dan. His, he go by Dan Mansion. He's an artist in the scene too. So um, I remember he was trying to get me to join the group. We had a mutual interest because we worked at this coffee shop together over at Johns Hopkins and shit. So um, he was like, all right, don't make no decisions. Just come with us to this place called Bell Foundry. I didn't know what Bell Foundry was. I didn't know none of that shit. All I saw him was a skate park and niggas outside drinking and smoking. I'm like, <laughs> I ain't never seen this before. And then the steps. You seen them dangerous steps? Have you been to Bell Foundry? Yo, I was like, yo, I'm not going down these dangerous ass steps, yo. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like, oh, hell no. Nah. So uh, they do their thing. Then at the end of the show, there's like – audio technicalities going on some shit with the audio and i can see them starting to panic and i can see the audience like what the fuck's going on so i literally just grabbed the mic <laughs> i just hit this freestyle shit goes wild i'm like yo <laughs> i can do this <laughs> i'm just looking like i can do this and that was like 2016 and then ever since then like i've just been uh rapping i came in the scene as my real name uh, my real name is alpha by the way but um I switched it to Joey Bricks in like 2017 because I was like, I want to make, I want to separate who really know me versus who don't type shit. So that's what I did with that. And um, yeah, most people think I'm from Baltimore. I'm not from Baltimore. I'm from Moco. I'm from Silver Spring, Maryland. <laughs> <laughs> I 
some this is there. Yeah, nobody, nobody thinks that. Nobody knows that shit. Every time I'm, like, talking to somebody, they think I'm from Baltimore. Um, I love to say I'm an honorary dummy, for sure, if y'all have me. But, like, <laughs> I'm a mo for real. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we all, I feel like the distinction between the two, uh, like, where you are and where you're from, it's important. One, two, important that everybody respects either side. The people that are, like, the location where you are and where you are from and like that having that mutual respect between the two is very phenomenal. Do you feel as though uh, it's kind of aided you in a sense to like be in the city where like kind of hustling and bustling instead of the more close by DC where it's just a fucking rocket ship each and every second? Hey bro, I got mad love for Baltimore. Because, like, D.C., like, honestly, I don't think most people will say it, but I'm going to say it. I don't care. It's too clicky out there or out here. Let me, because that's where I'm at. But it's too, <laughs> See, it's, it's, it's too clicky out here, man. Like, everybody's, like, if we don't already know you, then you're nobody. Or, like, even shows, like, people will really, like, oh, my, yo, that is a fat ass. You see that shit? That is a big ass. Bro, what is that? You ain't see that? It's like this big ass mob. I'm sorry. Not at all. <laughs> I just, it went downstairs, bro. You gonna see that shit in your room? It was big as shit. Anyway, it looked like a bird was in our house, bro. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, you see that shit? Yeah, <laughs> doing fat as shit. Sorry, sorry, bro. All right. So, what the fuck was I saying? Uh, yeah, Baltimore is mad clicky, like, even, like, you will see, like, and other Baltimore artists that have come down will even tell you, too, like, it's like they don't know how to feel, like, if they don't know you, they don't, I'm not gonna show you love, I don't know you, or I'm not gonna jump, I'm gonna act like I'm on my phone, even though I'm dead ass watching you, but I'm gonna act like I don't see you until my mans come up, like, compared to Baltimore, it's like, nobody give a fuck, if you lit, you lit, <laughs> That's it. That's all they care about is the energy. So that's why I gravitate more to the Baltimore side because it's just, it's more love. It's easier to navigate in Baltimore, man. And it's genuine. It's genuine people. So that's why I fuck with Baltimore. Happy. I do appreciate that very much, Joey Britt. Uh, for one person that we've been kind of like dipping and dabbing within the uh, DC like a year or two, you're not lying. <laughs> <laughs> you Bags, know, this shit's crazy. Doing those like inner circuit shows with like fucking uh what was it dc united dc first one of those one any that guy talk like doing shows like that like down there and then like the popping people come and it's like the crowd and they nigga leave yeah wow. it's, <laughs> they, they're just they're just not authentic out there man i don't know what it is but they become authentic because i made it like a point Earlier this year and a lot of 2019, I started really, like, making people come to Baltimore. Like, whether I had to drive them myself or whatever, they came. And now you'll start seeing more PG heads and D. I won't say just because of me, but I've integrated a lot of people from my side just saying, like, yo, like, that shit that you're used to on this side, that's not life. That's not real. <laughs> come up here. And then, yeah, so... I've been making that my own little personal mission to integrate the, the cool people from the side to come up there and shit. Yeah. Gotcha. So I want to tackle the first project that I wanted to talk about today, which was Here Goes Nothing. I want to uh, kind of get your perspective on how everything conceptualized for you for the project. Wow. All right. I, I fuck with you. So I'm going to give you the real, real. So like, <laughs> here goes nothing. Nah, for real, bro. Because there's the superficial answer and then there's the deep answer. Like, the deep answer is like, I was in a huge, I was in a very, very bad mental place with here goes nothing. Like, I, I just got out of a relationship, didn't under really, didn't really understand why it ended. Felt like, I, I don't know. It just felt like a lot of shit was just happening to me. Like, and I couldn't, I didn't have a say in anything that was happening to me, but things were just happening. And it just fucking sucked. Um, I had just moved out my parents' crib, but it wasn't one of those celebratory joints. It was like, yeah, like, get out my house type shit. And then um, I was just going through a lot. Like, I couldn't, like, I graduated college that 
I graduated in 2018, but this was last year. But anyway, I, it was hard for me to find a job when I was writing Here Goes Nothing. Like, it was crazy. I'm like, I got a degree from Morgan State. Nobody wants me. Like, it was a lot of shit going on, bro. So um, I felt like I was in a very bad place. So I was like, either I'm going to, like, sink or swim type of thing. You know what I mean? Like, so I feel like I chose to write myself into a better headspace where here goes nothing because I felt like I was drowning and I felt like don't get me wrong at one point I was like fine if I'm gonna drown I'm gonna drown but I was like nah I can't just drown like that so um I ended up just starting to write my feelings out because I felt like even me I wasn't even being real with myself like I was just on autopilot and then life just forced me to sit the fuck down and that's what I did and that's what here goes nothing was like I felt like I was out of options so that's what here goes nothing means to me like I don't know what I'm doing but here goes nothing like I, I gotta I gotta I gotta write I gotta get myself out this one like so here goes nothing so that's what that was about for real for real man I really appreciate a story like that when it comes to albums because as artists we kind of put ourselves within a certain space where we can't really separate work between like life or try to mesh the two. And most artists go through shit like that. It's just that it they worry about the marketable sense of it, if you know what I mean. So for you to put your heart on the sleeve with a uh, project like this, and even with songs like For Pancake Part 2 uh, featuring Martin J. Blue, by the way. Songs like that kind of like stick out to people, you know what I mean? Yeah, people really like that song because, <laughs> like, what I try to do with like all my shows, I do live listening, I don't do the whole like, I'm gonna listen to this, and like, yeah, I'm gonna give you my time. I just to get the entire like experience and listen to the song while you talk about what made this song. <laughs> what made this song right here? Yeah, oh, man. So, pancake. Yeah, nickname of my ex-girlfriend, right? So even if you went back to Balco with here, there's poor pancake on that too. So this one was like me just not understanding what the fuck was going on, like why we're not working, like it didn't make sense. And I'm just listening to the song as I'm trying to make my sense. <laughs> but yeah, so to me it was like Damn, like, for real, how many days are we about to be strangers? Because, like, I really fuck with you. I really love you. Like, what's going on? But you say you need your space. But, like, I'm the opposite. I'm a ten toes down type of person that whatever it is, let's fix it. While you're the, nah, I just need to think. It was just, for the first time, I felt, like, helpless. Like, damn, like, I'm Mr. Fix-It, but I literally can't fix it. Fuck, like, I've never been in a position like that before. So, yeah. So I felt as though I wrote for Pancake Part 2 just to get it out as, like, a letter. First, it started off as a letter, but then I just turned it into a song. And um, I knew I wanted it to be melodic, so I got my boy Martin J. Ballou in it, um, who really helped me, really helped me. And he inspired me to sing more, because he told me I could sing low-key, and I didn't believe him until I started <laughs> doing shit. Um, so yeah, that's how for pancake came about. Just like, oh, like a letter, like, hey, like, I don't get where we at, and I wish we could fix it, but we can't fix it. So here's my portion of fixing it internally within myself. So, yeah. So for those that's just, and that was for pancake two, uh, featuring Martin J. Blue, the song, the first song off of Here Goes Nothing by our guest for episode thirty two. Bricks. What's that sound? What is that sound? Bricks. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to everybody that's in the building right now. Shouts out to uh, Baby Badu. Huge shouts out to Baby Badu. Uh, huge shout out to Tori and a former guest of the show. Shouts out to my guy. Shouts out to Tone, uh, that Tone Lee. I want to make sure I'm pronouncing that right. Yeah, Tone the home. What? Tone cool this shit. You should interview her. But. <laughs> that plug on camera because I, I really she, want to. Hey, she probably <laughs> saying, I'm screaming right now. But anyway, go ahead. That's her signature. Go ahead. I know because uh, Cam said that on the, uh, her uh, interview on here. <laughs> well, won't say nothing right here. I'm screaming. 
Oh, also, shouts out to uh, Commodity Style, too. Shout oh, out yeah, to yeah, hell yeah. Right now. So, uh, Joey, I wanted to also talk about your hard work on the other side of the music, which is the shows. And in particular, not just your, like, very wild energy and, like, compassionate energy when it comes to performing, but also putting on the show as well. So, with this knowledge, with, like, how you did uh, the Here Goes Nothing show that you uh, did for that, and also you did for that, and you also much was just, like, bouncing in between, like, venues as well. So, the energy that takes with all that, how do you feel as though you keep yourself grounded? So my first show was the one that kind of put me on the map for shows. It was called Bricks Fest. That was right. last year in like July. Um, I was mad nervous and I really wanted to throw a show, but I didn't know how, but I knew I could do it, but I need someone's guidance. So I'm chilling with my boy, Phil, and he talking to me and I'm like, yo, like I'm trying to do a show. And he look at me like, nigga, aren't you friends with Kay? Talk to Kay. <laughs> I'm just like, you right. But Kay's so busy, he not going to want to fuck with me. Like, he don't really know me like that. I'm not from Baltimore. So I literally put Kay on speakerphone. And I'm, like, nervous, like, stumbling. Like, yeah, uh, girl, uh, <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm being around the bush and everything. Like, bro, um, I got this cool uh, idea to, uh, like, throw this show called uh, <laughs> Bricks Fest, and I'm nervous. And Kay literally... We the same when it comes to, like, communication because he let me finish and was like, okay. I was just like, is that it? He was like, yeah, like, when do you want to do it? <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, I, I didn't think you are going to say, yeah, like, uh, let's think about a date. <laughs> I'll call you back. And he was like, all right, bet. <laughs> and then we did that. Um, so Kay helped me facilitate my first show, especially with the lineup. Um, Cause after that time, I literally just met Miss Cam. Literally just met. I j literally just met Chris Cassius that uh, the same night at 808. I think me and Chris Cassius had the same show or something. Or I don't know what it was. Um, that's how I knew I fuck with Miss Cam. Cause after I performed, I, I performed my heart out, bro. Like, and she came. She was like, "Yo, I fuck with you, yo." Same night, I met 4K Michael. Um, so I knew I wanted them. Always been cool with Young Outlandish that he was on there. Um, if I and then I just let a lot of other people go, but that was like I think the the, the beef of the whole thing, the meat and potatoes of the show. And right. then I just let people go as they wanted. Um, so that gave me just the rubric of how to throw shows right there. Um, anybody watching that wants to throw shows, here's my tips, right? Your lineup is your lineup is everything. Your lineup. Don't don't sell yourself short. I don't care how you're gonna do it. Your lineup should be don't just do the homie hookup. Reach out, do some other shit. Got you. Also <laughs> plan for shit to go wrong. And this is what I mean for plans shit to go wrong. Like, specifically, don't have an artist go right after another artist. Like, get five minutes in between for niggas to talk, for some music to play, for something to go wrong. You know what I mean? You might even let your, yeah, you might even let a homie go in that five minutes, do a song real quick. But plan for shit not to go. Because it's not going to go that way. You're dealing with people, and people ain't robots. Um, promo. Be, promo. Just, like, promo your shit. Like, and give it time. I say at least give it three weeks, and that's at the least. I say a month is a sweet spot to really, because people make their decision based on how much you promo. And make your flyer look fucking fly, bro. People, we're, we're have yo, we love aesthetic. If some look cool, we going. Based off that flyer, I know I do that shit all the time. Like, so your flyer should be popping too. Um, but anyway, did I answer your? I'm a Gemini. I be. I don't know. Huh? You did answer your question. You did answer your question. I'm, I okay. didn't hear you. 
second. But yeah, you definitely answer like pretty much the balance of like the worlds that you're in. So I feel as though with the um, inspiration behind like throwing your own shows and pretty much like putting that type of forefront for people, not just like you, but other artists within the scenes as well. Do you feel as though you do the scene as service when you throw shows? I do a theme of what? Do you do the uh, do you do the city a service when you throw shows? Do I do the city? A, no, y'all do me a service. Fuck, <laughs> hell nah, uh, nah. All the all the glory to y'all when it come to that. Because honestly, I just do. I throw shows based off what I would like other people to do. Like every time I throw a show, it's based off what I wish somebody else would do. Like brick sessions. I think y'all came to brick sessions. That. That was something I wanted to see someone else do, like give everybody opportunity to perform. There's so many young people in the scene. That's why I did it on a Thursday. So 18, 18, the 18 crowd and whatever could come. And, you know, I know how it feels to be overlooked and like constantly want to do shows, but don't know the right people, have the right resources. So I threw that for really for the people that constantly show love but are quiet don't know how to facilitate in the community because they think everybody's untouchable oh my god that's this person and i see this person i can't possibly fuck with that i wanted them to just completely submerge themselves in the culture and not only that like most people get their first try at the crown in the blue room i said let's switch it up most people Black people don't get the red room. I'm sorry. They don't fuck with us in the red room. So I vouch for the red room. I was like, nah, I'm getting I'm getting the homies in the red room. And I'm going to get people their debut at the crown in the biggest room they had. Like, so I, I did all that shit very intentionally to help the whole community out. And then the veterans that came showed out like a motherfucker. Like, so, yeah. So I just basically, I just like to do shit that I wish others would do. And and I just yeah I just do what other people should do. <laughs> That's a service, man. I appreciate it because like people like you do kind of make that will go around when it comes to the scene. Whereas though there's a lot of shows happening, you no know, breaks or anything like that. Everybody has an opportunity to show what they can do on a given night. So for that, I appreciate it. Thank you. so. I want to go right back to Here Goes Nothing and talk about a song called Goddamn featuring for Michael. Tell us he washed me. He washed <laughs> me on the song. But anyway, go ahead. <laughs> so, okay. I want to uh, talk about how everything came to be with that song, uh, Goddamn. So, I fuck with the chorus. Like, I've been meditating, nigga. Please don't fuck up my zen. Like, that's how I felt. Like, because during Here Goes Nothing, I really felt like I started praying more and meditating more. So it was like, yo, like, I'm trying to better myself. Like, anything negative, don't come around me. Um, and I had previously met 4K. I knew 4K was lit. So I hit him up. And I was kind of scared to talk to 4K. I'm not going to lie, because... Before I knew him, he come off as hella like, don't talk to me. Like, for no reason, don't talk to me. Even if it's an emergency, don't talk to me. Like, and I used to just like, ooh, I can't talk to that guy. But like, I think I just DM'd him, was like, yo, can I get a feature? He was like, yeah. And then like, he pulled up to Android's crib. And um, I don't even think he wrote that, that, that verse. Or if he wrote it, he did it in five minutes. And when he spit it, it sounded like trash. It was good, bro. He, it sounded like trash when he spit it. You know, when I didn't hear the beat, because he had this baby voice on, like, I was like, yo, what is this? And then they played it out loud. I was like, this nigga's a genius. Like, <laughs> like yo, 4K is a genius. Like, every good thing that's going to happen to him, he deserves. That nigga knows... He's the first, he's one of the few people I can say knows what he wants when it comes to music. Like, I don't know my sound at all. I just make music. But that nigga does that shit intentionally. Like, he knows what he's doing. Like, even the ad libs. That nigga didn't waste not one ad lib. You know how sometimes, like, you'd be like, take that out. Nah, I'm like, nah, this, he was so precise with this shit. Like, 
Yeah. So anyway, he just came to the studio, laid that shit out. And I'm sitting there in awe, like, and he's just like, like, are, you got another song? Like, we, we like, <laughs> like, I'm just like, this nigga. Yeah, man. That's how that came about. Okay. You said what? You felt like you learned a lot in that one session? Yeah, man. I just learned that, like, not that I didn't do it beforehand, but now I really come in the studio with a game plan. Like, I really come to, like, kill shit after that. Like, after I seen how, like, yeah, how intentional he was and how he wasted no time, I'm like, that's how I am. I'm not wasting no When I come to a studio, I know exactly how I'm spending my time to every minute now, like. And it's helped me become so much more productive. Like, I have so much music I'm sitting on ever since that. Because I was like, I don't waste time no more. <laughs> yeah. So shout out, shout out 4K, man. Whatever he doing. He probably working on music right now. <laughs> so speaking of collabing with 4K, I wanted to talk about pretty much you collabing with other artists in general. Because I feel as though the game kind of makes it a little funny when it comes to, like, paperwork and things like that and offering features and some people would kind of lean towards the relationship role so do you feel as though that you kind of dip in depth roles like getting a feature and giving a feature like what's the question i'm not understanding pretty much uh basically like feel as though having a uh would you get that rather from the paperwork type where you gotta like sign a uh, contract okay. or, or relationships like the be... homies. Got you. All right, your side is kind of lagging. Can you see? Can you hear me? Can you? Oh no, I'm super frozen. I can't hear you, bro. Just keep talking. 